G'day, this is Bruce and uh, welcome to my shop. Um, we're talking about the RF30 clones and the, um, the fix that I've come up with to uh, help all those that have Taiwanese built ones or the other clones from other countries. The problem identified is the fact that the head moves when you're actually uh, cranking it up and down. We want to move, move the head up and down. You can see the wobble here on the, on the head. And if I turn that head around, you can see as I'm winding it up and down. And the reason is that quite often the gap in here is not conducive with the width of the, uh, of the rack. There's all different types. Some of them are better than others, but in general, that, that, and as you go up, you're getting more in the centre of the rack. The rack is only supported top and bottom, so that, that has a bending motion to it as well. So what we've designed here in Perth is a kit that can be fitted to the Rong Fu uh, in order to stabilise the vertical um, up and down. Now that kit is a very simple install for these machines. Um, I'm trying to make it as simple as possible as, and as least amount of components. The base components are these two parts, two halves of an Amiga clamp basically, with a notch in it and that notch is to fit around the turn that around uh, to fit, a, fit on both sides of the um, of the rack and uh, so we'll come back to actually mounting of that. So that's the first part. On the end of this part there's two holes through and there's also three screw holes in the, in the back in the heel and the idea of that is that this center the center one is for the re regular block and the two outer ones are for a uh, situation where we have two of these clamps, one at the top and one at the bottom, for long, uh, long columns. The next item is the uh, bearing block. Uh, and this bearing block is machined very, for a very neat fit uh, on, the, on the clamp. And um, it has, uh, it's, it's furnished with a hole down the centre and also with two bolts that go through um, and clamp onto, onto there. So then, I, I, when I send them, I send them normally already installed. So the, the block, the bearing block is already there. And there's a, um, another nut, an insert nut here for the retention, if needed, the tensioning, I should say. Um, the, other, the other component is a beam. The length of the beam determined by the amount of movement in, in the head for the vertical uh, rise and fall, uh, and that's a that's a, uh, a true um, beam, uh, aluminium beam, six, uh, 6061, and it has uh, three threads in it. And the the final component is this bracket, and the bracket's made with uh, slots uh, in both uh, in both planes. And that allows you to be able to adjust it to the many different styles uh, and, and types that there are, and in in the main to take to take into account a clearance. We want the beam to be able to clear uh, down here at the bottom of the of the column. So, what we're going to do in the next stage uh, uh, will be to actually demonstrate the install. So those are the components, and then together with the components, the other parts of the components are bolt sets. So the loose bolts that are sent out, the three short ones, for bolting the bracket to the head, and three longer ones for bolting the beam onto the, onto the bracket. So they're, they're the longer of the bolts with their washers. Um, and there is a a tensioning bolt that goes with as well, that's loose. So what we need to do uh, in order to fit this <coughs> is, uh, first of all, we've already determined the, the length of the beam. So the beam has been, is supplied by us um, to suit a particular machine. Uh, in this case, we've got 
115 millimeter or four and a half inch column. Uh, so those clamps suit that column. And this one has a rise and fall of about 305 millimeters, which is about 12 inches. Um, and that's determined by the lowest point that you can rack it down and the highest point you can before it hits the cap at the top. Um, so what we'll do is we'll, we'll roll that down a bit and we'll show the process of, um, of, put, of filling it up. So the first thing is we're going to do is we're going to put the clamp, the clamp together um, and that clamp will, will bolt on with two, with two supplied studs and they can come in in two forms. They may they may come as a as an Allen uh, um, a hex head bolt, or they may come as a flanged bolt. Uh, in this case, I'll use the flange bolt because it's easier to demonstrate the um, the install. So we'll mount those two um, those two in, and we're going to put it down at the bottom here because in this particular case. That's, that height there is the lowest point that this head can come down to. So we're going to mount it right at the bottom. Um, we'll just quickly nip that up. Now the, the, uh, the advantage of this, this kit compared to kits or other things of like putting lasers against the wall or anything else is the fact that it can actually be used doesn't take away from the ability to be able to rotate the head in, in either direction. Um, so you've still got that when, it, when it's fitted you can be loosened, they can be backed off and the head can be moved to the position you want to move it to and all this stuff. So let's, in this case we'll put it so that it's more or less in, in the centre. Um, there's no need for it to be set. This The, the install doesn't have to be with this perfectly in centre, it could be anywhere in any in any position as long as we've got clearance. So we'll wind that down to its lowest position. We'll just set that in. Now the next thing we'll do is put the column the column the beam up. And when it's at its lowest position, what we're looking for is to have the beam down to a point where it's not actually touching the um, the frame, the bottom of the frame, and that we should put it the right way with the bolt sticking towards the uh, the back. So we're going to put that in, push that into place, can come out a fraction, just give it a little bit there, and then what we'll do is we'll mount we'll mount the bracket. Which is within itself it's a very, uh, very simple exercise. All this can be done loosely. There's no need to, at, at, at this point in time, there's no need to look for any sort of lining up accuracy and so forth. What we want to see, because this is tight in the bearing and the bearing is, is, is in the vertical position, it's pulling this bracket into the correct position for, uh, for the marking out. So we'll, we'll screw this up here. Um, and we've got a bit of clearance here, we can lift it even a fraction more. That'll give us should be the movement we need for the head above. So we'll screw that in there. And now we've got slots here. I'm providing uh, three bolts, but if somebody wants to, they can, they can fit more in. Take into account this is a casting, it's cast iron. Be very careful with your drilling and tapping. All right, so we can turn this around a bit even to show, maybe to show a bit uh, so we've got that there, that's in position, that's all held up, uh, we're all in place, we can even lock that up a little bit more, and lock that bracket, that clamp, that should be enough for the exercise. Um, we'll just have a look here and uh, you see that that's nice and in place, now all we need to do is to mark where we're we going to drill those um, this hole, so we should have a, um, a sharpie here, um, and so what we can do is we can we can mark both sides of those slots with the sharpie, um, and what I what I'll do here is I'm just going to mark 
a position which is more or less in the centre. Um, and that'll give us the position for those three bolts. Um, I, I, I will note that all these machines are metric uh, and I'm supplying everything in metric. All the bolts are metric. These can be replaced instead of the M8, they can be replaced with a 5 16 uh, UNC or whatever you want. So, so we'll go ahead now and, and mark, we've marked it, so our next step will be to, uh, to drill those three holes. So what we'll do is we'll just take a little starter and we'll set those to the holes. We can uh, mark those three where we want those holes. And as I say, you can make six if you feel more comfortable with that. I might just lock the column up while we're doing the drilling. Okay, so we'll lock that up. Um, let me put a rag over here so that we don't get any clean because I have spent a bit of time cleaning this up. Um, and we'll drill those out. As you can see, it's not a very thin, not a very thick wall. We'll now do the uh, tapping size drill. And uh, I'll use a block. I have several blocks. I have this type of block, which you can put the, uh, the drill against and use that. Or in this particular case, I've got a block um, with the correct correct hole size I'll use that And we can then um, we can then fit the angle plate once those three holes are tapped. Now they'll come down. Well, there we go. So we can tap that down. This bolt here, as I said, that's just a tensioning bolt in case. Um, there's a bit of wear and tear over time with the um, uh, with that bearing, which we don't uh, believe there will be. So uh, that can be then fitted in here and uh, and locked up. And the added value with this allows us also to um, be able to fit a DRO with a couple of step outs to fit a DRO here to measure the vertical rise and fall. 
So um, without uh, just that one bolt in there, we can demonstrate that rise and fall now. I have confidence that this is enough at the minute. Get it right. Thirteen mil. What's important also that there's not a great load on this whole uh, whole setup. I'll just straighten that out. Um, there's not a great load, so there's no need to over tension these bolts. They don't need a lot of uh, tension um, to be able to, to get the results that we want to get. And as you can see, I'm only doing this with one single bolt there. Uh, we'll just have a look and see. Looks okay. Okay, so now what we'll do is release that head off. I can leave that in there. Release the head off. I'll swing it back around. Let's say we're in the centre here where we want to be. But as I say, it doesn't have to be the centre. You might be wanting to go somewhere else. We're at that centre. We've got that lined up. We haven't got that lined up properly. Later on, that could be lined up true to the column, but at least it's, it's in position now at the lowest operating position. So now we'll demonstrate both rise and lower um, we'll just tighten that up a bit more that's all, that's all it needs, it doesn't need a huge amount of tension so now we should be able to raise that up we feel it's a lot more um, stiffness there and as we're raising that up, we haven't got that movement, that sideways movement at all that we had before. Um, so that's uh, that's about it as far as the uh, the kit and fitting the kit is concerned. Uh, <coughs> we can come back and revisit other aspects in the future, but that's really the kit that we're we're selling, the True Line Eight. Um, stabilizing kit for any of these um, round column build drills.